Tornadoes come in all shapes and sizes. Some are fleeting little noodles, barely strong enough to knock over a flower pot or rip the roof off a doghouse. Others are enough to pulverize entire communities, reducing neighborhoods to rubble and wiping foundations bare. It's fair to say that not all tornadoes are created equal. Fortunately, the monsters are as rare as they are terrifying. Officially, tornadoes are ranked on a 0 through 5 scale known as the Enhanced Fujita Scale. It was adopted on February 1, 2007 as a modification to the original Fujita scale, named after the late Japanese scientist and severe weather researcher Ted Fujita. EF0 tornadoes on the bottom end of the scale are weak and have winds generally less than 85 miles per hour. Still, that's enough to uproot or snap trees, which can fall on vehicles or homes below. Even the weakest tornado can bring the winds found at the core of a Category 1 hurricane, and that's nothing to shake a stick at. Next are EF-1 tornadoes. They have winds of 86 to 110 miles per hour. EF-1s blow in garage doors, cause roof damage, and can flip cars. According to the Tornado Project Online, about 70% of tornadoes are EF-0 to EF-1, or F-0 to F-1 tornadoes. Alrighty guys, tornado right now, tornado in Annapolis, Maryland. This is the tornado, there you can see it right here. I'm only a few hundred feet away, this tornado sets then we have EF2 tornadoes. Those are deemed significant by the National Weather Service. They can destroy homes and commercial buildings alike. Most EF2 or greater tornadoes come from rotating supercell thunderstorms. EF2 tornadoes are usually longer lived too, often spending more than 10 minutes on the ground. They have winds of 111 to 135 miles per hour. Then we have EF3 tornadoes, like this one I chased near Farnham, Nebraska on May 17, 2019. EF3 tornadoes have winds of 136 to 165 miles per hour. Entire neighborhoods can be ravaged, with only a few interior walls left standing in each home. Only a third of tornadoes fall into the EF2 to EF3 category. A direct hit from an EF3 tornado can ordinarily only be survived below ground. Then we make it to the violent tornado category. EF4 tornadoes have winds between 166 and 200 miles per hour. If you get hit square by an EF4, odds are you'll have nothing left. EF4 tornadoes can toss vehicles like toys, dash a well-constructed home to pieces, and leave nothing but a pile of rubble on a foundation. During the April 27, 2011 Tuscaloosa, Alabama tornado, this train car pictured at center was thrown 391 feet. That's more than a football field away. The good news is that, within an EF4 tornado's damage footprint, only maybe a percent of the area actually hit experiences EF4 damage. Look at this map of damage points from the Rolling Fork, Mississippi tornado that hit on March 24th. Only the tiny red triangles mark where EF4 damage occurred. When you witness the damage left by an EF4 tornado, it can be tough to make sense of what once stood there. All that's left may be piles of lumber or a massive metal water tower left bent over like a wilted flower. Less than 1% of tornadoes reach violent EF4 or greater strength. Then we have EF5 tornadoes. Look at that tornado! EF5 tornadoes have winds topping 200 miles per hour. At those speeds, it's tough to tell the difference between EF4 and EF5 destruction, but there's one telltale clue. EF4 winds level a home and leave a pile of ruins on the foundation. At EF5 strength, the foundation is swept bare. There's nothing left. Here's what that looks like. Same for this one. EF5 tornadoes can do terrifying things. This academic paper recounts some of the most extreme EF5 damage ever observed in the modern era. Pavement is scoured from streets. Vehicles become deadly missiles. In 2011, an EF5 tornado in Smithville, Mississippi tossed a red Ford Explorer a half mile into this water tower, denting it permanently at the top. The Hackleburg Phil Campbell, Alabama tornado, also from April 27, 2011, tried to pry this storm shelter out of the ground. 72 people died in that storm. Often, the only way to discern between EF4 and EF5 destruction is to analyze how well a home had been anchored to its foundation. Despite comprising only a half percent of tornadoes, EF4 and EF5 tornadoes are responsible for two-thirds of all tornado deaths. 
Oddly, however, there hasn't been an EF5 tornado in the United States for 10 years. We've had a lot of deadly EF4 tornadoes, but EF5s have been mysteriously absent from the lower 48. The Mayfield, Kentucky tornado of December 10, 2021 did come close. It had winds of 190 miles per hour and killed 57 people along its nearly 166 mile path. Foundations were swept bare, indicating EF5 damage, but the tornado was rated an EF4 since engineers couldn't prove houses were firmly anchored to said foundations. That raises a key criticism of the enhanced Fujita scale. It doesn't estimate tornado strength. Instead, it is simply a damage scale used as a proxy for tornado strength. Consider the monstrous Bassfield, Mississippi tornado of April 12, 2020. So large that an eye developed on radar as it swallowed the town. Could that one have had winds over 200 miles per hour? Well, perhaps, but it didn't hit anything that could prove it. In other words, all the structures destroyed would have failed in winds below EF4 strength. Even if a forest is raised, the National Weather Service can't assign an EF5 rating. The maximum wind speed estimate they can award is 167 miles per hour based on tree damage. That premise proved an issue with the El Reno, Oklahoma tornado of May 31, 2013. It killed nine people, including legendary storm chasers Tim and Paul Samaras and their partner Carl Young. A research mobile Doppler radar estimated the 2.6 mile wide behemoth had winds up to 296 miles per hour, just 500 feet above the ground. After initially awarding an EF5 rating, however, the National Weather Service later revised it back to an EF3. Put simply, there wasn't much for the super tornado to hit. Aside from a few homes and vehicles that it demolished, it passed over rural fields and dirt roads. The National Weather Service survey team couldn't find any damage commensurate with EF5 strength. In a statement, the National Weather Service wrote that, quote, While the wind measurements from the mobile radars are considered reliable, National Weather Service policy for determining EF ratings is based on surveys of ground damage. Among meteorological circles, it's commonly accepted that El Reno was a rare species of tornado elite even among EF5s, but it will forever remain an EF3 in the books. Officially, the last tornado to be rated in EF5 was the Moore, Oklahoma tornado of May 13, 2013, 10 years ago today. That one carved through the southern suburbs of Oklahoma City around 3 p.m. on a fateful Monday afternoon. It struck multiple elementary schools, killing seven children at the Plaza Tower School. The destruction was complete, the magnitude of the catastrophe unambiguous. Two dozen people died. But the tornado carved through enough neighborhoods that finding some EF5 damage was virtually inevitable. The scene was eerily reminiscent of May 3, 1999, when a similar F5 tornado with radar estimated winds to 301 miles per hour killed 36 people, also and more. Between the two cataclysmic tornadoes, some places were hit twice. So putting it all together, the fact that no tornadoes have registered as EF5s in the past decade is a product of coincidence and luck. There very well may have been some EF5s that we'll never know about. There's good reason to feel that way too. A study published in 2021 by Karen Kasiba and Josh Werman used radar data to estimate that as much as 20% of tornadoes, not 1%, may be capable of EF4 to EF5 damage. Most just roam over open fields. For now, the record long streak without any EF5s continues, but it can't last forever. And when it does end, there will be nothing left. Follow My Radar on social media Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, Xbox, and Windows.